Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Thursday, December 22nd, 2016. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. The Constitutional Court rejected the Democratic Party's request to declare the vetting law unconstitutional. In a meeting that lasted for more than three hours, six Constitutional Court members supported the vetting law, while two members supported the DP's request to repeal some points of the law. The Constitutional Court's decision paves way for the vetting law to be implemented with the aim to free the country's justice system for from corruption and bribery. The law requires assessment of all judges and prosecutors' professional preparation, moral integrity, and independence from organized crime, corruption, and political control. The Prime Minister commented on the court's decision, declaring that the Democratic Party delayed the law but could not stop it, and that now is the time to implement the law. The Democratic Party commented on the Constitutional Court's decision for the vetting law. The Democratic Party emphasized that though it respects the court's decision, it remains concerned that the current law will place the vetting process under the Prime Minister's control. The Democratic Party respects the Constitutional Court's decision for the vetting law, but reiterates its determination to clean the justice system from corrupt political servants. The Democratic Party remains concerned that the current law will put the vetting of judges and prosecutors under the Prime Minister's control. The risk is the same regardless of who is the Prime Minister. In the current conditions, Eddie Rama is the Prime Minister of the country. He is connected to crime and corruption. The Prime Minister's control over vetting will further deepen corruption and political control over justice, reads the Democratic Party's statement. It's been 114 days since the vetting law was adopted in Parliament, and it can finally be implemented without obstacle. The vetting law has seen near-constant obstruction since its adoption on August 30th of this year. With 88 votes from the majority, the vetting law was unilaterally approved in Parliament. Then, on October 5th, a mere day before it entered into power, the Democratic Party appealed the law with the Constitutional Court claiming that it was unconstitutional and violated the European Convention of Human Rights. In response to the DP's appeal, the U.S. Embassy declared its concern that the Democratic Party was at risk for being seen as a party that does not want the reform and that it was defending corrupt judges and prosecutors. The DP chairman reacted to the U.S. Embassy's statement declaring that it is not the ambassador's place to say what the DP chairman's duties are. On October 25th, the Constitutional Court suspended the law, blocking the judicial reform from being implemented and asked for the Venice Commission's opinion on the vetting law. The vetting law also sparked harsh debates in Parliament between majority and the opposition, with the majority accusing the opposition of being against the judicial reform and of hampering the country's integration, while the opposition accused the Prime Minister of trying to control the justice system. And in a separate instance, the Union of Judges also asked the Constitutional Court to review the vetting law. Another delay for implementing the law was the partially inexact translation first sent to the Venice Commission. The law was retranslated and the second version sent to the Venice Commission on November 30th. The Venice Commission sent their reply on December 10th, stating that the law is compatible with European Convention of Human Rights and has no apparent issue with constitutionality. Today, the Constitutional Court officially rejected the Democratic Party's appeal, leaving the vetting law unchanged to be implemented as it was adopted on August 30th in Parliament. Three months will be needed to set up all the institutions for the vetting law. The Central Election Commission has not gathered yet to review the prosecution's request, a full day after the Prosecution General asked the Central Election Commission to remove the mandates of two MPs and Kavaya's mayor. The MPs, Shkolkachim Salami and Dashimir Tahiri, along with Mayor Roshi, were found to be in violation of the decriminalization law, having not revealed all the information on the forms. 
The CEC chairman commented today on the interruption of mandates, saying that a detailed analysis is needed for the two MPs and Kavaya's mayor before making a decision. Since this is the first case, the Central Election Commission will carefully analyze any legal details of the issue, said the CEC chairman, adding that the responsibility to make a decision of the mandates of three officials is extremely great. I want to emphasize that the Central Election Commission has exclusivity to make the final decision, and such a decision cannot be easily made. Therefore, the responsibility is very high, said the CEC chairman. The prosecution's request to remove the mandates needs a four to seven vote in favor of removal by the Central Election Commission members. According to the prosecution general, the two MPs and Kavaya's mayor did not declare former convictions given by foreign courts on their decriminalization forms. Answering at the interpolation, which was asked for by seven MPs, Prime Minister Rama exchanged harsh accusations and language with his former friend, the former socialist MP Ben Belushi, in today's plenary session. During the interpolation on integration, Prime Minister Eddie Rama reiterated that swift implementation of the key vetting law is the only condition set by the EU to open accession talks with Albania. The Prime Minister added that no one expected the European Council to set a date for the negotiations at the meeting earlier this month. This group of MPs knew nothing about the EU integration process. I'm saying this because their request for this interpolation reads that the European Council didn't set a date for opening the negotiations due to the failure to fulfill the five conditions. Yet nobody expected the Council to set a date, the Prime Minister said. Speaking on behalf of the seven MPs, MP Ben Blushi accused the Prime Minister of supporting criminals and blamed him for Albanian citizens continuing to leave the country en masse, creating increased pessimism about a European integration. Eddie Rama is not capable to rule the country. What else can be urgent if the integration is not urgent? Albanians are losing hope that they may become EU members, Blushi said. In response, the Prime Minister compared MP Blushi with Sali Berisha and added that the current government and its reforms have given Albania the candidate country status. In his official visit to Turkey, President of the Republic, Buyar Nishani, held a meeting with the Turkish counterpart, President Erdogan. The focus of their meeting was security issues and the fight against terrorism as the Albanian president extended his condolences for the victims of terror attacks in Istanbul and other Turkish cities. President Nishani also expressed solidarity and Albania's continued support in the fight against terrorism. President Nishani also condemned the murder of the Russian ambassador to Turkey, considering it to be a cowardly act. Both presidents gave special attention to intensifying cooperation between intelligence, law enforcement and security institutions in the function of the fight against terrorism and organized crime. Albania is willing to contribute within its possibilities and to be by Turkey's side and the side of the allied countries in the fight against terrorism, declared the president of the Republic of Albania, Buyar Nishani. Albania's Cardinal Dom Ernest Choshani gave a speech at today's plenary session calling on lawmakers to pay more attention to the citizens' needs and to support and serve Albanian citizens. I'm not here today to teach you anything new, but to thank the Albanian people who, after five decades of suffering, have found the strength to recognize and appreciate the value of freedom, of consciousness, and trust. I am one of the last witnesses and survivors to have suffered from torment and persecution. Pope Francis honored not only me, but all Albanians who fought for the moral revivic revivification of the Albanians, who have struggled to find strength and consolation, said the Cardinal, reminding the MPs that they have been elected to accomplish a high mission and must not forget the needs of the people they serve. Honorable MPs, let us pray for peace, fraternity, and love. 
Let's work to ensure that everyone sees prosperity, justice, and blessing. Be closer to people's problems and make politics a service and not a profit. Then you will earn the respect of ordinary people who believe in you, said Cardinal Troshani. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for your local news in English. My name is Mari, and on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.